الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا قبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام ولا سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد مبارك وسلم In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, mercy, blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon all of you, my brothers and sisters. I hope that you are keeping good. Jumma Mubarak to all of you. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the blessings of this beautiful day of the Jumma. Now, from last uh, two, three sessions, I was talking about we were trying to understand, we were trying to figure it out, we were trying to educate ourselves that how we can get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are the things that can really make us among the special servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, among the pious and the righteous servants of Allah? What are the things or what are the steps that if we adopt, it will make us among those people, those who are, those who are able to achieve the closeness of Allah, those who are able to achieve the the nearness of Allah and I have discussed that and I have given you a few steps to get closer to Allah. The first one was remembering the death. When you will remember the death, this is something which can help you to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second point that I have discussed in my last session, that was to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The more you know Him, the more you will love Him. The more you know Him, the more you will worship Him. The more you will explore your Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how powerful he is, how amazing he is, how mighty and he is, and the great kudrat, the great power that he has, the more you, your heart will incline to worship him, your heart will incline to love him. And all these matters, inshallah, all these elements, you know, it will contribute towards achieving the closeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So first is remember the death constantly, abundantly, and I have explained that in detail. And the second is know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially through 99 names, through the Quran. The third one is my favorite. And this is what I'm going to discuss with you. You know, your favorite can be the first or the second or any other point, inshallah. But this is my special one. And this is the dua, supplication. Supplication. My brothers and sisters, you know, anytime, you know, anytime I'm feeling distance, you know, I, I feel a little bit off. I feel a little bit uh, stressed out. Dua always work for me. You know, this is something that can helps you to communicate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is something which gives you the conviction. This is something with, that, that you are really communicating with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because this is the ultimate connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, dua. And for that reason, you know, this is my favorite step. This is my favorite you know, uh, subhanAllah, ibadah, which, which always uplifts me, which always gives me the uh, light, which always gives me the noor, and uh, it helps me to understand Allah more, to appreciate Allah more, to thank Allah more, to praise Allah more, subhanAllah. And I believe with most of you, same is the, uh, you know, factor, same is the reason, subhanAllah. So, Allah, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَيْسَ شَيْءٌ أَكْرَمُ عَلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى مِنَ الدُّعَى there is nothing more important in the presence of Allah. There is nothing more honorable, more most noble, or more beloved to Allah, or more closer to Allah than dua, than supplication. It's the most important thing in the presence of Allah, the most important ibadah, is when his servant raises his hands with humility, with humbleness, with, with ijzu in kisari, and he says, Ya Allah, forgive me. Ya Allah, give me this. Ya Allah, give me that. SubhanAllah. At that point, those moments are very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. So if you really want to get and achieve the closeness of Allah, you want to make yourself closer to Allah, raise your hands and you will find Allah next to you, inshallah. Because Allah himself says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ O oh Muhammad, when they ask you concerning me, Allah is saying, when they ask you concerning me, tell them I'm very close to them. And how can I get close to them? Through dua. And Allah says, I respond to their supplications, I respond to their invocations, I respond to their prayers and their dua whenever they ask. Whenever they ask me, whenever they beg in my presence. This is the promise of Allah. 
And so then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fal yastajibu li. So they should obey me as well. If they want me to answer their dua, so they should also answer my calls as well. The calls of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is also lazim and malzum, is, is, is one of the shart, is one of the condition of duas to be accepted. You can't be just expecting that you committing all kind of sins and you doing nothing and just raising the hands and you want your duas to be accepted. So there is the environment that we have to be in first. We have to follow certain conditions, certain sharaid, and you will see Allah will always, Allah always, you know, accept our duas. Dua is one worship that can never be rejected. Dua. Now, Allah responds to the duas in a different ways. That's the next thing. One is this that you asking something for in this world, Allah will give you right away. And the second way of responding from Allah, that probably Allah will not give you what you are asking, but Allah will save you from the calamity. From next thing, probably Allah will save you from the cancer, from Allah will save you from the major disease. You know, Allah will remove the obstacles from you. Probably Allah will not give you the exact thing that you are asking, but through the dua that you are making, Allah will never waste the dua. Allah will save you from something which is more worst, which is more damaging for you, which is going to cause more destruction for you. And the third way of responding the dua by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that probably Allah will not give you anything at all in this dunya, but Allah will keep the reward of that dua, reward of that time that you spend in the dua in this dunya in the life of the hereafter. So duas are always respond. Always, you know, you know, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala respond to the duas. This is the promise of Allah. Ud'uni astajib lakum. Ask to me and I will respond to your supplications. So, subhanallah. So, build your relationship with Allah through the dua. Because Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa said that a dua mukhul ibadah. The dua is the essence of the worship. If you look at all the worships in the Islam, if you look at all the ibadat in the Islam, in every ibadah, you will find the element of the dua. Let's look at the salat. Salat is all about dua actually. The minute you say Allah Akbar sana, and then what comes? Surah Al-Fatiha. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa said that afdal zikr la ilaha illallah, the best form of zikr is what? La ilaha illallah. And then he says wa afdal dua alhamdulillah. The best form of dua, the best form of supplication is what? Alhamdulillah, Surah Al-Fatiha. So in the salat itself is the dua. So that is why dua is the essence of the worship. You understanding? Mukhul ibadah is the cream of the worship. It's the maghaz of the worship. Good? So hajj, hajj is all about dua as well. Especially on the day of the Arafah. Both two hajjis sitting here, they will, they will verify this. Day of the Arafah, al-hajj, al-Arafah. The hajj is all about Arafah. And what we do on the Arafah? Haji sir, is raising the hands in the dua. Is all about dua. So all over, over is the dua, subhanallah. So that is why the most important thing that can really help us to connect ourselves with Allah is the dua, my brothers and sisters. You know, no matter what you are facing, no matter how distant you are from Allah, how far you are from Allah, just spend 30 minutes in the masjid on your prayer mat. Raise the hands and ask, beg, do the istighfar, remember Allah. After the 30 minutes, you will feel light. You will feel that you are a successful person and you have the noor and you have the blessings of Allah and the tranquility is literally descending upon you. Once you're making the dua uh, with its right, once you are doing the justice with the dua. So how to make the dua? I always mentioned, raise the hands. You, okay. And then praise Allah first of all. And then send salutations upon Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then ask whatever you want to ask. And the first thing that you should ask for yourself is the istighfar. Ask the forgiveness of Allah. And then ask other things. And then when you are concluding your dua, when you are ending your dua, so once again the same thing. You know, send salutations upon Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then praises Allah. And then expect from Allah that Allah will respond to your supplications inshallah. This is the way. Look at the Ashabul Kahf, the people of Kahf, the people of uh, Kev. They were not the scholars. They were young, just young people. They were not the alim. They were not like, like scholars like shuyukh and hufaz and something like that. No. They just made one dua. And because of that, they became people of kahf. The people of cave. So admirable. Allah appreciated them so much. Especially the dua that they made. That Allah even made that dua in the Quran. Allah, you know, subhanallah, the, that, that dua is in the Quran. And what is it? Rabbana atina min ladunka rahma. This is the dua they made. 
and people will remember them till the day of judgment. So you see the, the relationship that they made through the dua, this is very important, very vital. Rabbana atina milladun ka rahma, ya Allah grant us the rahma through you, ya Rabbul Alameen, from you, ya Allah, grant us the blessings. Wa hayy lana min amrina rashada. And ya Rabbul Alameen, ya Allah grant us the hidayat, grant us the guidance, grant us the light in our affairs, in our matters. Chapter 18, verse 10. Memorize this dua, inshallah, the dua of the Ashab al -Kaf. This is what made them special, this dua. So you see the power of the dua, my brother? So ask Allah. Whatever you have to ask Allah, you know, you just have to say, Allah, give me, and Allah will give you, inshallah. Allah just have to say, kun and fayakun. Allah, you know, it doesn't take time to respond to duas by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't think that Allah probably is, is impossible, Allah will not give me. Ask whatever is halal, whatever is lawful, and you will see, inshallah, once you are asking with the conviction. So build your relationship with Allah through the dua. And I want to give you one special dua. And uh, inshallah, we will, we will put it in the comment section. And that dua is, Allahumma inni as'aluka hubbuk. This is the dua of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma inni as'aluka hubbuk. Wallah, I ask you for your love. Allahumma inni, I want you to memorize this. Ajisaf, it is on your WhatsApp, so you can put it in the comment section. Allahumma inni as'aluka hubbuk. Wallah, I ask you for your love. Wa hubba man yuhibbuk. And the love of those who love you. And the love of those who love you, Ya Allah, I want to love your prophets. I want to love your pious and the righteous servants. And I want them to love me as well. I want to honor and respect them. Subhanallah, it's a beautiful dua once again. Allahumma inni as'aluka hubbuk, wallah, I ask you for your love. And wa hubba man yuhibbuk, and the love of those who love you. Subhanallah. And then, wa hubba amalin yuqarribu ila hubbuk. And the love of every action which will bring me closer to your love. We are talking about how to get closer to Allah. So this is the dua. So you are ending this dua by this saying that and the love of every action which will bring me closer to your love. And Good. So dua will be in the comment section which was so dua of Dawud alayhi salatu wasalam Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wasalam mentioned it is in the Tirmizi Sharif. So memorize this dua inshallah. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, count me among people, those who are closer to you, those who are near to you, those who are pious and the righteous ones. So this is the third step which can help us to closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Good. What is the fourth one? Shortly I'm mentioning, fourth one is, subhanallah, is Quran. Quran. Easy things I'm mentioning, simple things, straightforward. If you implement, you will see the difference in your life. So the first is remembering the death. Second is Educating yourself about the power of Allah, about the Qudrat of Allah, about the 99 names of Allah. And the third is Quran. And the third is the Dua, which is my favorite and most of yours as well. Dua. And the fourth is Quran. Quran is such a great blessing, my brother. It's such a great ni'mah that anytime, anywhere you open the Quran, you will feel the light immediately. You will feel the difference immediately. You will, you will, you will, you will see that Allah is elevating you. Right away. This is the miracle of the Quran. And you know, so Sahaba Ikram, the predecessors and Salafu Salihin, they used to say that when, when we wish to speak to Allah, we offer Salat. The minute we offer Salat, we say, Allahu Akbar, it's like we're communicating with Allah. This is what Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that offer your Salat that you are looking at Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Eh? So they say that when we wish to speak to Allah, we offer the Salat. So it's like we are communicating with Allah. We are in communication with Allah. We are in conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we wish to, that Allah should speak to us, we open the Quran. We open the Quran. So it, it, it gives us the idea, it gives us the, 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 the thinking that Allah is talking with us. Because that's what the Quran is. Allah is Allah, these are the Allah's word. You open the Quran, it's like Allah is talking with you. Allah is giving you the instruction what to do, what not to do. How to get it from all the sorrows, how to get it from all the problems, how to get the riches in your life, how to deal with your family, how to live a, a beautiful and a comfortable life and a content life. All those things are in the Quran. So it's like Allah is in communication with you. Allah is in conversation with you, subhanallah. So khayrukum man ta'allam al-Quran wa'allama. The best one among you, the one who learns the Quran and then the one who teaches the Quran. So be the best one, inshallah. If you will do this, you will get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Anfal, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ That the mu'minun are those, the believers are those that when they, 
when when they remember allah you know what happens to their heart when they when they engage themselves in the zikr of allah wajidat qulubuhum they feel the difference in their heart it shakes their heart the minute they they hear the name of allah the minute they utter the name of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it it shakes their heart subhanallah they feel the fear in their heart about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they, they feel the fear of allah and waida tuliyat alayhim ayatuhu zadathum imana and when the verses of the quran are being recited in front of them or when they engage themselves in the recitation of the quran what happens it increases their faith it it builds their relationship strong with allah it makes them closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it increases it 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 boosts their iman you know subhanallah it boosts their faith subhanallah and wa ala rabbi mutawakkilun the believers are those those who always rely and depend and put their complete tawakkul and trust in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and after a few verses allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what he says alladhina yuqimuna salatan then he says ulaika humul mu'minun haqqa they are the people those who are on the truth they are the people those who are on truth because they get the comfort of heart through quran hain they increase their iman through quran they increase and they build their relationship with allah through quran and through the sadaqa through the zakat and through the charity and through the salat and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says lahum darajatun inda rabbihim so subhanallah for them are the gardens of dignity with their lord allah will increase their darajat allah will increase their stations in this dunya as well as in the life of the hereafter because they have beautiful relationship with the quran wa maghfirah there is a maghfirah for for them and wa rizqun kareem subhanallah in the and the plenty provision generous provision subhanallah by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you know it was asked you know let me tell you one very simple and interesting thing once it was asked to the sheikh a alim or the scholar you know that what kind of relationship sahaba had with the quran what kind of connection the companions of nabi kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam had with the quran and he gave a very simple answer which is very relatable he said the kind of relationship that you have with the whatsapp the kind of relationship that you have with the facebook with the instagram or with the twitter because this is what we doing whatsapp in the morning in the evening on the dining table talking with the family members but your mobiles are your hands are clicking the typing something you are walking you are typing you are listening something you are watching the videos on the airport in the waiting room this and that this is how our is connection and our, our relationship is with the with these kind of things and when it comes to the sahaba ikram they used to begin their day with the quran they used to end their day with the quran on the dining table they're listening and they're reciting the quran while they are in the journey they used to nominate one qari and one 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 hafiz please recite the quran for us while we are traveling while we are you know walking towards makkah to madina from makkah to madina subhanallah this was their life and nowadays it has turned to whatsapp and facebook and all those kind of things these things became our life actually the part part of our life as a mumin our life is quran my brothers and sisters nabi karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam says al quran hujjatun laka aw alayka quran is something which can be in your favor or in against you it can be something which can go against you as well on the day of judgment so just imagine for a while for a while think for a while think for a while that if may allah may allah give us long life but just assume just think if today you die if today we die what will be the response of the quran what will be the behavior of the quran with us in the grave and on the day of judgment if quran will come and save us or it will go against us think is a simple question asked to yourself it will it will help you to understand that what kind of relationship that you have with the quran we don't recite quran is just on the shelf and that's it and we make this excuse that we don't know the arabic this is not the excuse learn the arabic right away learn the arabic learn how to recite and if you can't do it, at least read the translation of the quran transliteration of the quran listen the quran open the pages of the quran my brothers and sisters because this is something that very important and this is the best way to connect yourself with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says afala yatadabbaruna alquran am ala qulubin aqfaluha do you not reflect on the verses of the holy quran do you not ponder and concentrate on the quran or am ala qulubin aqfaluha or your or there is a seal on your heart what what is wrong with you why you don't understand the quran why you don't recite the quran quran is not for the animals is for you 
is for hudalil nas is the guidance for the whole mankind and that guidance will come when you will open the pages of the quran so give time on a daily basis my brother on a daily basis inshallah and you will feel the difference in your life inshallah so we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and to make us among those people those who are